You guys are about to watch a sick reef tank tour. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Fish Friday. Today we're gonna to be doing a reef tank tour of my Red Sea Max 250. We're gonna check everything out. If you guys are new here, I post new fish videos every single Friday. I've got some updates on this tank and some things that you guys may or may not be looking to do to your Red Sea Max 250, like Radeon XR30 Pro lights under the hood and a sick cable management system underneath the cabinets. Let's start with what's inside of the tank and then we'll go to like the technicals of the lights and all that kind of stuff. I've had it for almost a year and a half now. The prior owner owned the tank for four years. It looked nothing like this. It was just like rocks, coralline, and like sand with a couple fish. Previous owner had like a boulder of rocks in the center. I kind of scaped it out a little bit, did a nice little rockscape. So I got a nice Monty there. It was actually a much bigger colony, but as you can see underneath it, it's dead because this green, it's called like a green spongalus or something. I'm pretty sure it stung it and then it just spread like wildfire and I couldn't break it off in time. And I actually just broke off that humongous piece right there and listed this for sale because I have nowhere to put it or nowhere I want to put it. Like one spot is enough. That grafted Monty, you could see, you could see the size of the frag that it started with. And I've probably had it for like, I don't know, six to eight months, growing crazy. I had to break off another frag over there. Corals just grow super good in this tank for me. I have this guy here. I don't know the actual name of it. I call it asparagus because I don't know, it kind of looks like asparagus to me. I originally had it right here. It was a piece that grew on the rock and I didn't notice. And then all of a sudden it started sprouting and that's already huge piece in like, I don't know, maybe a month and a half or so. This side of the tank has a good good little mix of colors. I need to work on bringing some more colors to this side. It's a little bit duller. Back there, a green toadstool. And then right under there is a, I wanna say it's a, a nuclear, which I'm actually gonna break off pretty soon because he already, the frag already spread to the rock. So I'm just gonna break off that actual frag piece and probably frag it out and make my money back. Here's a new little pink leather thing that I got recently moving right down here. This Monty is where I originally glued that huge Monty there. And again, a piece just stuck to the rock and now it continuously grows. And every time it grows out, I just frag it and then I sell the frags. So it's just like a little frag growing factory for the Monty cap right there for me. And I just, whoop. This rose bubble tip anemone is out of control. I wanted to split so I could sell one. It's not doing it. I'm trying to train the clownfish to go in it. I actually have had photos stuck onto the walls for like a week now, a week and a half. I just took them off just to do this tour, but they're gonna be going back up. I'm also gonna swap out these black and white pictures for colored photos, uh, probably tomorrow, to see if the clownfish grasp the colored photos better. And then we'll know that fish see color. So yeah, I wish the clowns would either go in there or it would split already or do something because it is, granted, it has stayed in this position. It just like, when it closes, it goes down under the rock and then when it opens, it comes here, but it's killed half of my season's greetings though. He is starting to grow this way, but still, I mean, there's a nice piece there and I don't wanna break off what's starting to die because then I'm scared that the rose bubble tip would continue to move this way and I don't want that. Down here is the GSP, it came with the tank. I don't want it to take over the tank so I try to keep it isolated. I originally had that issue, I had another huge rock of GSP here. It was just spreading to the rocks and it was getting out of hand so I sold it and I left it only up there on the power head. I'm gonna see if it grows onto the back wall and then pretty much just leave it out of away from the rock structures so that I could easily trim it back and do whatever I got to do with it. Down here, I have a little, I believe it's called a burning banana. I just moved him there. I don't know if he's going to do good or not. Uh, I originally had him over here, but when I moved the torch here, I needed to get him out so he didn't get stung. We'll see how he does. This little porcupine thing also came with the tank. I ripped off a bunch of it. it hasn't caused any, any negative side effects yet, so I just leave him alone. Bubblegum Digi. This guy looks awesome when the lights, the blue lights are on. I don't know what started happening back there. It looks like he got like, he caught something or something stung him. I don't know what happened, but the rest of him has, hasn't gotten affected. So I've just been kind of, 
hoping that it was something back there only. Moving down here, we have a Halle Berry colony. You can actually see the frag plug that this started with. Seven, eight polyps on the original frag. And that was a really quick grower for me. It filled up this rock extremely fast. I kind of broke this off because I didn't want it to spread and keep going. It's so far done a good job of not spreading onto that rock. I've kind of just been keeping an eye on it. Right below it, I put Utter Chaos. It's a bit of a slower grower for me. It does bring a nice little orange pop to this corner. So it's, it's whatever. This Blasto, I got it with two heads on it. It had one, that top center one is the main one and one on the side. Now it has three huge heads. I believe there's even some like starting underneath there. I'm not sure even how you frag this thing if it was to like grow too big, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Back in this corner, if you can kind of see it in the reflection, I got a little mushroom colony. These guys, ex look at this guy is almost as big as the, the rose bubble tip. The mushrooms just love this corner. I don't know what it is, but they flourish over here. Oh look, I got a polyp over here that this guy's just eating. Sweet, dude. I moved some to this side. It's gotten bigger over here, but not as big as on that side yet. I'm, I'm thinking it just needs some more time. I'm hoping it just needs some more time. If this corner can get how that other one is, it would be Real, real nice. So that's pretty much that side, minus the frag rack. The frag rack is just, you know, extra corals I'm selling because I have to break stuff off to make it fit. These are new, I think they're called fire and ice. I got them on a trade. I put an empty frag plug on each side of the, of the current frag plug so that way they can grow onto the new frag plug and then I have more frags. A meteor shower, it's gotten onto the rock and started to spread that way, which is good. Right here, we got a frog spawn, which I was having a difficult time with. I'm just happy he's finally looking better. A small piece of Ghani that's left that pretty much died. Um, and then we have Jason Fox jack-o'-lantern. This guy was really slow to grow here before the Grafted Monty started covering him. I think he was too high up and getting too much light. And then as soon as he got shadowed, he just started taking off. The same thing with like, I have more of him that broke off of the plug. And this guy down here is just taking off as well. This is the stunner that I got, Hollywood stunner. It was a huge disc. I've been having to break it because it's just not enough space. It grows so fast, but it does sting stuff and it has really long tentacles. So. I gotta be careful uh, with what I put around it. Over here is the uh, Zoa garden that I have on this little bridge. Oddly enough, these Zoas, I, I don't remember all the names of them. Uh, I think those are radioactives, maybe birds of paradise, eagle eyes. These grew really fast, like to get to where they are now. But for the past couple months, like they don't really grow anymore. Except for these yellow ones. I've just noticed now that they actually kind of like doubled over the last month and a half or so, which is kind of weird. But yeah, the goal was to get this whole bridge uh, looking like a nice little Zoa garden. Cornbread, rainbow infusions. I've tried to glue this like three or four times to that spot right back there and they just keep falling off. So apparently they don't want to be there. I don't know, living on the ground. Maybe I'll have them take over this rock and that might look cool. These acans right here, I originally killed the first one because it dipped over in the sand and I didn't realize it until it was too late. But it looks like it came back, came back, because now it has one here. I have to flip it around, but I want to say I see three on the other side of it. I don't remember the name of him, maybe an, a laker or something, I don't know. Started as a frag plug, like maybe a size of a quarter. Haven't had much luck with this Recordia and this mushroom here. They've kind of just stayed exactly where they are. I'm thinking maybe put some red mushrooms here to that way tie in some red over here. I need some more pop over here. If you guys got any recommendations for something that would grow here, good. Drop a comment down below and let me know. Here we got the Duncan. Started off with a couple heads. I like him in the corner. He's a little flowy, flowy guy. The torch is new. I've only, oh, that was a good one. That was a good slow move through the wind. I only got him like a week and a half or so ago. I was really nervous to bring him in my tank because the frog spawn wasn't doing good, so I was kind of a little iffy. I didn't want to risk it, but I, you know, I kind of just said, screw it, and let's just go for it. That looks like a happy torch to me if I've ever seen one. Over here, we have, I don't know what the heck it's called. It's like some 
eerie leaf thing. This was like a $5 frag that I got like this big. It's just like an extra just to get in good color. It's a really slimy frag and it fell down into that rock and I was just like, screw it. I'm just gonna leave it there. Next thing you know, this thing starts growing out of the rock like, like, well, like this. Back there is more Monty, which was from the original. I literally got a Monty frag, maybe like this big to start. I can grow Monty in this tank, like nothing. Like it just, the colors stay vibrant. It grows super fast. It just thrives in this tank. That's a sunset Monty. It was doing good at first. It's kind of been losing its color. I've moved it around a little bit. We have 24 karat gold here, which is, also not really growing much. This Superman here, I had him down there and he wasn't growing. So I moved him over here and now he seems to be growing onto the rock and doing okay. I'm not sure what these are called, but they are growing nicely. Started as quarter size frags. This Favia here I've had for a while. It kind of just hangs out. And then I have another one of these types of corals back there. It's like a darker blue in the center, but he hasn't really been doing much. He's just been hanging out. I'm gonna give you guys a top view real quick. making these corals grow so fast and so beautiful, you might be asking yourselves. Or you might not, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. So one of the first things I did when I got my Red Sea Max 250 is I swapped out the lights. I bought it with like two or three of the ballasts blown. I knew off the bat I wanted to go LEDs. I didn't know which LEDs. I was originally gonna do a, like a build your own kit, but then I came across an awesome deal for some Ecotech Marine XR30 Pro lights. They're Gen 2 boards with Gen 3 lights. I am fairly certain that they are the reason for the awesome growth in my tank. We took out all the ballast, all that stuff, and then directly mounted the two XR30 Pros inside of the hood, and I left the water protector cover here just in case they fall or anything like that. To help with the cooling situation a bit, since this makes the tank run even hotter, my tank does tend to run a little hot. I would say probably like around 82 degrees. My thermometer is pretty broken, so I'm not always 100% sure, but I mean, everything seems to thrive, so I just let it do its thing. I did leave the two fans in for that come with with the Red Sea Max 250 hood. So I have them set up on the, the light timer. So that way, when these lights turn on, I have those on the timer to also turn on so we have more fan circulation and it cools this system off a little bit more. I'm just running the, the stock pumps that come with the Red Sea Max 250 and then I also recently got a Ecotech Marine MP10. Love this thing, I just like how it adds a little bit of extra flow. I also put it low enough that I could leave it on while I'm doing my water changes. So that way when I pour my new water in, it kind of cycles that water quicker. Ta-da! Ooh, did you see that though? That sensor light? I worked real hard on getting that. This is under my tank. These are the boxes for the XR30 Pros. I probably shouldn't have hit it that hard. And then I also run it with a reflink. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's usually a hit or miss, but whatever, I have it anyway. I got this sick, sick sensor light. I mounted up the MP10 drive to the side wall here just so it's out of the way. I have it set up on a schedule that I did within the EcoSmart Live app, so I don't ever really touch that unless I'm shutting it off for some reason or when I was setting up my cable management. Other than that, it kind of just stays on the wall and I Velcroed it up there. And then I have this three pump doser, a Jacquard three head auto doser. I am only dosing alkalinity and calcium though. DIY set up with some Voss water bottles. It's been super clutch. After weeks of trying to dial it in, I think I finally got it. And I'm dosing right now 20 milliliters of Alka Day, split into two, and 15 milliliters of calcium every other day. And that's what is working right now for me. It's keeping my Alk between nine, 9.5, and it's keeping my calcium around like 420, 450. We'll see, I've dropped it down to testing like once a week now, uh, and just kind of keeping an eye on it, but finally, I think I got it. And then back in this box is just all the cables for the cable management. This one is just like my everyday food testing, 
RO, that kind of stuff. I don't run a skimmer. In the back, I run some rocks. Uh, Chemi Pure Blue is something new that I've been trying out to kind of help with the Sino. And I have Purigen back there. That's it. That's all I run. No skimmer. Oh, and filter floss. I'm thinking about adding some Kato to the back. If you guys have Red Sea Max and you have added Kato, let me know. That is the full Red Sea Max 250 Reef Tank Tour. If you guys like this video, if you like my tank, do me a favor, throw a thumbs up on the video. It really helps me out. If you guys want to see more Fish Fridays with me, make sure you guys hit subscribe and turn the notifications on so that you know when I post. If you don't turn the notifications on, you won't know when I post. I don't post at a specific time on Fridays because life is just hectic, but I do try to get a video out every single Friday, so make sure you guys are here for it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you like my tank, and we will see you guys in the next one. Later. Need a little bit more excitement. Hop, hop. You guys are about to watch a sick reef tank tour. How's that?